Good afternoon, I'm Seth Hart, the Program Assistant for Fine Arts at the Wayne County Extension Office. And to any beginner out there listening, uh, welcome. This is going to be another segment on watercolor, and I wanted to review that, but at the same time, take it a step further and show you a little bit more about overlapping as well as value in general. So I'm going to be covering primarily value in this lesson because we're working from a very light color uh, to... Um, a very dark color and uh, this is like a monochromatic lesson where we're using various tones of the same color and in this case it will be blue in our mountain design so this is going to be helpful as far as learning more about value and also going to help train you to draw landscapes or in this case mountainscapes so um, what I've started out with before I get started on the lesson itself is um, just a simple value scale or value diagram that I made and it's in five steps and it goes from a very pale blue to basically black it's not solid black it's mixed in with some blue too but um, just you know to the darkest part of the scale anyway so um, I do encourage you to make your own value scale before you get started on this just so that you can practice and um, the lightest color in this design will be white because it's the natural color of the paper, of course. But um, we're just going to be adding a touch of blue with each layer. And um, eventually we're going to start adding black to make our, our dark tones. So just another look at the value scale. And uh, take one more look at the mountainscape before we get started. And this should not take you long to do. It's a very quick exercise. Uh, we're going to be working on watercolor paper. And as a review to my 4-H'ers, if you're tuning in or if you're a parent of one of my 4-H'ers, this, would, this exercise would um, go under Section 728 in the State Fair Catalog as watercolor, and it's described as using watercolors and a variety of techniques to complete a painting on watercolor paper. Just as simple as that. So I'm going to be using a soft bristled paintbrush. The soft bristles allow the liquid to flow better, so keep that in mind. And I have a palette here that obviously has had a lot of use. I know that you can't, you may not be able to tell where the blue is, but I have it right here, and I'm also going to be using black, so those are the only two colors. And I'm going to dip my, my brush in water first, and I'm just going to add a touch of blue, not much. Might be just a little bit too much blue. Luckily, watercolor is forgiving when it's wet. You can clean out your brush and remove what you don't want to a certain extent. So, so all I'm going to be doing is basically sketching that first layer in. Keep in mind that mountains are organic in their form. They don't look a set way or a certain way. Just sharp and rocky and not symmetrical. So don't get hung up on perfection here because nothing in nature is perfect in form. So it's going to be our first layer, and this will be our background. When you're looking at a landscape, things that are seen from miles away won't be as vivid. They'll be more hazy looking. So this demonstrates that aspect of it. So what I'm going to be doing next is adding a touch more blue for my second layer. Be sure that you dip that brush in water first. And we will 
paint in the next layer. So I'm going to start on my third layer. Again, I'm just adding more blue to make it darker. Make these edges sharp as you go. You can always go back and fine tune it. to make those edges crisp to show that it separates each layer. You know, penciling these mountains out is an option, but if you're using a pencil to do that, or in other words, if you're choosing to use a pencil at all, I would make those lines very light to where you can barely see them. It's hard to mess mountains up, so I'm just drawing them in with paintbrush. Pretty much making it up as I go. Okay, so for our next layer, I'm going to get more blue on my brush, but this time I'm going to add a little bit of black because we're working our way into the darkest parts. Add just a little bit more blue to that layer because I don't want it to look too black. So again, getting back to the um, fact that watercolors are more forgiving than some mediums, you can go back and correct things if you need to more easily. So we're going to add one more layer and we will be finished. This is pretty much solid black at this point. Still has some blue in it just because it's a shade of that particular color. So it's like a deep navy. And again, this is just a five step scale, but if you wanted to make this even bigger and make it a 10 step scale, you can start even lighter in color than what's in the background here and uh, just have more steps as you go down. 
you can make the scale as long as you want but it gets a little bit trickier and a little bit more complex when you have more steps in it so starting out as a beginner keep it simple just keep it at a few steps so with that said we will conclude this for the day i appreciate you tuning in and we will see you in the next video have a good day